All right, today we're going to uh, go over how to do basic screen repair. Um, and this would be, you know, uh, plus, and for this example, we're gonna just pretend either our screen's broken, like it got dropped, something smashed it, you know, um, that does happen. Uh, the other thing too is there are some components behind here that do go bad. Like you can see if I push, uh, it was, um, the screen, uh, kind of that flicker. Um, there's a ribbon cable, which kind of looks, this is one of them, that's back there. And this typically will go, will, will go out. Um, sometimes it's a board that's back here and we will get to that uh, here shortly. So before we can get to any of this, let's just go over some basic things real quick. First, we're gonna have to take these four screws out. Um, these four screws are what actually holds the faceplate on that'll keep the screen in place. The other thing we're going to have to do is kind of like how we did for the handle removal and the uh, keypad removal. Go ahead and remove all of these, um, all the support screws in the back as well. Um, because we're going to not only take off this top faceplate, but we're going to have to take out the keypad and the, um, the what we call the base plastic and to fully expose the board and the back components because there are some things that correlate down from up here to down here. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and take out these screws. Uh, one more note, sometimes you can kind of see that there are three, one, two, and three, and there's not one here. That can be common um, if you happen to have a, a, you know, a spare screw, you can go ahead and put it in there. The plastic here tends to uh, weaken after uh, multiple times of taking it on and off or over tightening. So sometimes uh, you will have a unit without a screw. Um, sometimes you should be able, you could be able to uh, put a replacement in there. Uh, another trick is just take a little dab of hot glue, put the plastic on, and then screw it in. Um, but that's after the repair. We'll get to that later. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and take out these screws. Uh, in my case, three. Uh, yours, probably four, maybe more. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do that. When we come back, we will have these four screws out and the bottom screws of the unit. Okay, I've got uh, the screws for the faceplate out along with all the uh, support screws on the back. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and pop this open. So like we've done in previous videos, let's just go ahead and pop this keypad out. Take this out. And quick reminder, remember you want to lift from the inside up and then pull out. Just don't want to yank too hard. Um, there we go. Because again, these are fragile. Whoops, there we are on camera now. Because these uh, tabs are fragile um, that hold this plate in place. So we can set that aside. Now we're going to go ahead and take the screen, and this should just pop right up like so. Okay, let me kind of tilt here. So this is what I was saying: how this that ribbon cable feeds up from the bottom up to the back of the screen. So that's why we had to take all that off to get to it. So now we can go ahead and pull the screen up and you kind of want to pull up towards you and you can see that there is a, 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 board, a, a screen control board and a couple things. You have a, a power, a power light ribbon, a data ribbon, uh, I guess data ribbon to the screen and then a data ribbon from the, the board to uh, to here. So <clears throat> Okay, so in Any example, we're just going to go ahead and um, Completely take the screen out and then put it back in and just so you can kind of see how that process works. So um, Using a screwdriver uh, flathead, just kind of pop that tab up. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure what that was, but anyway, all right. So we're gonna pop pop this tab up. You can use your uh, 
finger as well. And you're gonna just pull this cable out, and when you pull that cable out, you'll see the screen goes black. All right, next is push these tabs down. There's one on each side, and you can pull that, and that'll free the screen. Now we are left with just the um, ribbon here, screen ribbon. Now this board is, um, it's kind of like a plastic rivet type setup where there was tabs and they, they, you know, over time they either come loose or break. Um, we use some double-sided sticky tape to hold these back in place if they do pop off completely. But uh, same thing as we did on P1, you'll do P2, you're going to slide these down and pull that cable out. That's going to come down here um, and there is a, let me see if I can kind of show you. Um, there is the P2 cable goes to the P8 and which is in a, uh, um, a clamp. Now one thing I did forget to mention, um, which we're going to go ahead and do now, is turn the unit off and you can use anything. Um, you can see that the, the, the uh, power switch is right back here, right back here and just kind of slide that switch over um, and th that red light will turn off but you can always access it right here too um, it doesn't matter but anyway the, turn that off avoid uh, you know uh, touching anything you know especially like I'm using the screwdriver here to push this tab up if I can get a hold of it there we go push the tab up and the cable will come out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this bad cable over here and grab this new cable. And again, nice thing is, you know, just remember P2 does go to P2. Um, so first thing I always do is I always put the P8 in on the board. And once you get it in, hold it in place and push that down and you're going to tuck that in under here and we're going to go ahead and put the P2 cable into the P2 slot. Now this board is a little loose on the one end uh, so it's going to make it a little tricky but I'm going to go ahead and push it in and get that nice and clamped in there. All right? Okay, next. Uh, in this example, again, we're pretending that the uh, screen was cracked, you know, broken, just didn't turn on. So this is going to be our fake pretend new screen. And just kind of the same way it came out, you're going to set it in at a, kind of an angle here. And first thing I always like to do is to get the P1, which is the thicker cable, into place, lock, clicking those lock mechanisms. Now the P3 you want to be kind of careful with, once you get it in there, um, the little plastic black tab that holds this ribbon in place can be kind of fragile just because of its size. So you want to be careful because that can break and if that plastic piece does break off, you're pretty much going to have to replace, put a new uh, screen board in, which is this whole green board here. So now that that's in, you can flip the screen back into its housing and you kind of got to have to push it down. It should lay flat and there is a metal casing that goes around. It should lay flat flush with that. And once you get that in there, now you want to go ahead and flip it on. And the reason being, before you put this all back together, you want to make sure obviously that you did hook the screen back up correctly. And once you have it in, it does, or once you turn it back on, it does take a second, as you can see, um, for the screen to actually illuminate and boot up. That's just standard, so not, nothing to concern or worry about there. So, um, just gonna wait and see, and you can see the screen is up and it looks good. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, put this back together. And kind of the same way we took it apart, I'm just kind of work in reverse. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, um, screen housing top back on and snap in at the bottom. 
and then push up at the top. There is no snapping up at the top, um, so uh, you'll just get a little bit of snap at the bottom. And the same thing with the uh, base plastic. Remember, kind of go in and at a little bit of an angle, just a little bit, and you want to push until this back area is flush and flat and then push down and then now that's back in place lastly put our keyboard back in slide that in place tuck under and tap push down and we're good go ahead and just do a quick check and you can see we do have keypad working so that concludes well not yet actually we we do need to put all of our screws back in the four for the plate and the uh, eight on the bottom that holds the bottom all together so once you get all that done that is how you would fix a screen on the ibingo unit